My name is Josan Darby and I work in the Career Center as a career advisor for the College of Education. And uh, today I basically wanted to go over uh, what your transferable skills are, how to identify those things, and how, the, how you can put those things on your resume to um, have a completed resume. Also, I will go over um, the structure of a resume and Lauren just emailed me hers and I saw some things right off the bat. It looks great, but I think I can get that gold star, put that gold star finish on onto your, your resume and get things organized. So I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Um, email me your resume and um, you know we can knock it out. Now I do have walk-in hours here um, in which you guys can just come in in between class. I will have all of my information, my laptop and everything right here for you guys as well. Um, but but uh, getting right into to what, uh, what, what I'm here here for, uh, transferable skills, highlighting your leadership experience and on-campus involvement, all right? Now, the UNT Career Center, how many of you have ever visited the Career Center? Okay, you have. And I'm assuming that you visited with either Brittany or your career advisor, either Brittany, Brittany was your career advisor? No, um, I met with Wayne Campbell. Okay, all right, Wayne Campbell at the time, so. Um, right now, I am the designated um, career advisor for the College of Education and, uh, um, and the School of Journalism, okay? But um, this is what we do over there, and I know you guys are familiar with it. Uh, one on one advising, career assessment, um, resume reviews, mock interviews, workshop presentations, that's what I'm doing now, career fairs, um, networking events, on campus interviews, student employment, mentoring and job shadowing opportunities, all right? Now, transferable skills are designed, uh, uh, I'm defined as this. Um, skills developed in one situation that can be transferred um, to another situation. Um, versatile skills that, that um, you can make use of in a number of different roles. Functional abilities are required in many different problem solving tasks and oriented situations. Um, interdisciplinary, um, abilities involving many areas of human development, cognitive, social, moral, moral skills are just a few uh, examples. Um, and some of your, your um, soft skills as well. So keeping that in mind, and I will go over all, all of them, all right? Um, so what are transferable skills? All right, when you're looking for those, those uh, buzzwords to add to your resume, this is your cheat sheet, okay? Um, a lot of employers, they're looking for uh, team builders, um, people that are persuasive, individuals that are detailed oriented. All, right, all, all of these action verbs, you want to add these if they pertain to who you are and your personality. All right? um, you follow instructions well. You're very supportive. Um, you're adaptable. That means that you can go into any situation and adapt. If that applies to you, you want to include that on your resume. Seeing the big picture. Okay, not coming in being shallow-minded or narrow-minded, but seeing the big picture uh, whenever you're joining an, an organization. All right, you can add that if, if you have that, that foresight. Um, having integrity in everything that you do. Time management is huge. All right, being a decision maker, being articulate, being able to articulate your ideas, your, your uh, points, um, your knowledge base, suggestions, being articulate with that and knowing how to convey that information. Meeting deadlines, okay? Multiple employers will give you deadlines. Look, I need this by 2 o'clock today. Well, I already have an assignment done. I don't care. Get it done. So they expect you guys to be able to meet deadlines. Um, you, great problem solving, okay? If that fits you, you put that on your resume. Manage projects. If you've done that with any jobs that you have had, any group activities that you have had, if you can do that, those, those things, that's a great attribute. Um, organized events as well, um, delegated tasks. If you ever, again, work in a group, you know, I would do this, you do that, you do that, you do this, and we come together as a team and put it all together. Um, great listening skills. you got to be a, an active listener. Um, anticipate people's needs and go ahead and get it done. Um, research focus. If I don't know the answer, I guarantee you I will find the answer. All right. Um, have great negotiation skills, knowing how to negotiate things. If that's a, something that you have, that uh, you can be persuaded, persuasive, um, that fits hand in hand. Put that on your resume. You're able to motivate others. These are your coaches. 
These are your team leaders. These are your student organizational leaders. I'm not saying that Michael not a great motivator, but only two people showed up. That's all I'm saying. Sets realistic goals, priorities. I mean, well, prioritizes um, um, what's needed now compared to, to, I got a little bit of time to get that done. I'm not procrastinating. If you're a procrastinator, please don't have prioritize on your resume. Please don't. All right? Uh, create new ideas. All right? Being innovative, creative. If you have that mindset, that's a huge asset when you join someone else's team. Okay? All right? Now, employers were asked which attributes they look at for on a candidate, uh, a candidate's resume. They look for leadership. You mentioned that. The ability to work as a team. Now, when you're joining someone else's company, you're applying for a job. They already have a team. One of their team members may have got bumped up to a higher position. One of their team members, team members probably said, no, nah, I don't want to do this anymore, so they, they opt out. So they already have their core group. So anyone that they bring in that's involved in the hiring process, uh, all, everyone will be involved in that and bringing in who they get a good feel for. So when, they, when you come into a, an interview, you, nowadays you're not interviewing with just one person. They have several people in the room, or they may interview you with, let's say, Mike, and then you may go next door and, they, and Mike walk you to someone else. So they can kind of get a feel if you are fit or not. Fit or not. You got um, written communication skills, okay, that you know how to document certain information that pertains to getting your job done. Problem solving skills. If we're in a group meeting and, 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 and we're all stuck, do you have that out of the box thinking, hey guys, let's look at it from this uh, perspective. Uh, strong work ethic, okay, um, analytical skills, all right. Technical skills. Uh, what computer software skills do you have? Do you possess? Is it just Microsoft Office? Or have you educated yourself to uh, move past that? Uh, verbal communication skills. Are you soft spoken? Hey, good morning. How you doing? Or hey, good morning. Good to see you. You know, I stopped and got some donuts. What type of personality do you have? Okay. Uh, uh, initiative. Do you take the initiative to get stuff done, or do you just sit back and wait? Well. I know it needs to get done, but they didn't call on me to get it done, so that's not my that's not my responsibility. All right? They may have just fired someone who just sat back and up that way. They want someone who, who will take the initiative to get stuff done. So skills employers want. Uh, when employers are forced to choose between two equal qualified candidates, they will choose the one who has the leadership skills over the other. They're looking for leaders, people who can come in and interject their knowledge base to help us grow, okay? No one wants followers. No one wants yes men, all right? No one wants that. Um, academic major and high GPA are also key determining factors, okay? How you learn, all right? Um, how much time you spend on your education? What was priority for you? Remember back on the other screen, we had prioritized. We know you're in college, you're in UNT, over 38,000 students, a lot of parties. You know, you're away from home, got freedom, do whatever you want to do. Roommates gone, you know. What are you going to do? Are you going to go to that party on Fry Street, or are you going to stay here and, and get this information done, work on your resume like Mr. Darby instructed you to send to me so I can send it out to an employee on your behalf? It's up to you, all right? These are some key factors that employers look for. Um, demonstrating your skills. Listen to your trans uh, list your transferable skills under the skills section. All right, on your LinkedIn page. How many of you have a LinkedIn page right now? Do you? Do it needs tweaking a little bit? Okay. Listen, we have uh, LinkedIn seminars uh, at the Career Center. Okay. All right. Um, and we have one coming up. I don't know the exact date, but you may need to um, visit our website um, to gather that information. Employers, yeah, they're going to check your Facebook. They want to see how many how many uh, uh, parties that you taking the keg to the head. All right. They want to see if you a party animal. They want to see, you know, do you like animals? They want to see the 
other side of you, not the professional you, because everybody can put that mask on. They want to see, you know, who, who, who you really are, what, what uh, character flaws you have. So, yeah, they're going to visit Facebook. But most importantly, they go to LinkedIn now. That's your professional, professional social media site, all right? And if they go to LinkedIn first and they see all of these things and then you have people uh, checking out, you, you know, you got people vouching for you, all right? These are your reference people, okay? You list these things, then you know you got, you know you got at least one person that's going to like everything that you list. That's Mike, all right? So, uh, you got request endorsements from your professors and co-workers, all right? Make sure that you go uh, and befriend them on LinkedIn. Let them know that you have a professional profile, okay? All right, you want to stand out. Stand out. Remember those buzzwords, all right? You're motivated. I'm passionate. I'm creative. I'm driven. Uh, extensive experience. I'm responsible, strategic. I have a tremendous, uh, credible uh, track record. Uh, I have great organizational skills, uh, and I'm just an expert. This is your time to brag, okay? If no one has ever bragged on you before, this is your time to brag on yourself. Don't be modest. Let them know, hey, listen, this speaks for you. They don't know your face. They don't know your voice. Well, they can see your face, but they don't know the energy that you transfer. This speaks for you, okay? Most overused buzzwords in LinkedIn profiles. Are these now your branding statement okay passionate driven sales expert with a proven track record for developing creative solutions and challenges see you take all of those words that you had listed and you put them in this form it gives it a totally different connotation see the difference See, people can go down and list stuff, but in what context? But when I come out, and after they see your name and your address on the top of your resume, next is your professional profile statement. Then you hit them with this, Lauren. I'm a passionate, driven sales expert. Man, that employee going to be like, man, I can't wait to read the rest of this. All right? These are great branding statements, okay? Great branding statements. No more would you need to put an objective statement. That's passe. Okay? That's old fashioned. Throw that out of the out of the door. Uh, brand, uh, objective statements are too vague. Okay? They really don't tell the substance of you out of an, an objective statement. You can't get this. Okay? Objective statement just say, I'm a motivated teacher and I want a job at your school. Well, well what else? That's not going to make that employer or, or that principal want to read the rest of your resume. But if you put, I am a passionate, driven teacher who loves students, guess what? You're going to get a call. I am an effective, confident team leader with, with the, an initiative, uh, uh, intuitive listener with a knack for turning individual talent into team success. All right, so on your resume, Okay, uh, your head, all right, it's very important. Uh, you want to center your name, your name is big and bold, all right. That's what you want the employer to see first off the bat, all right. Then you come down to your address with a nice bullet point or a spacer, uh, the city and state, then your phone number, then your email address. All of your pertinent contact information needs to be at the top of your resume. And once you've done that, then you want to hit them with your professional profile. Okay? And that's when you come with, with the gusto. To make them want to read the rest of your resume. What's going to set your resume apart from everyone else? Now, do not limit yourself. Uh, do, not limit, do not limit your experience um, as far as being an a paid employment, um, for having paid employment. Um, if you have relevant um, employment um, um, opportunities, if you've had those before, you want to list those. Any internships, any service or, or uh, uh, volunteer work, uh, 
whether it was in the athletic field, or class projects, or anything like that, you can list those. Those, those uh, segue into your transferable skills because then you're going to explain what you did. Okay? Now, you have two types of resumes. All right? Two types of resumes. You have uh, functional and you have chronological. All right? Now, your functional resume, you're going to, your professional skills you're going to list. I worked in customer service. Okay? Now, what did you do? I greeted customers as, as they entered the door. I handled all issues and troubleshooted customers' issues um, that, that, that was brought my way. Your leadership and employment, all right? Now, chronological resume, you're going to list your job, list uh, your involvement. I was in customer service, and I had leadership skills, all right? So that's how that, that is set up. Now, on your resume, which is a functional resume, you want to list your leadership and involvement, um, the things that you've done, advertisement club, Pi Kappa Pi, UNT chapter, and um, everything that you do, you want to have it uniform. So if I'm bolding these things, and I'm not bolding, you want to have it uni uniform all the way through. Okay? Now the font that I normally suggest is Calibre Light. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it works for me. Okay? You want your resumes to be as easy to the eye for, for the employer to read than anything else. I get a lot of resumes that students students send me that's in uh, Romans time. Well, the letters got hooks on them, you know, they're all fancy and, and stuff. Don't nobody want to read that. I mean, it, it makes them cross-eyed when I got a thousand stack of them. So you want to have it smooth, okay? All right? So uh, those, those fonts are the ones that I suggest. Caliber light is perfect. Perfect. Um, your professional skills on a functional resume, you list it as such. Creative thinking. Develops captivating and creative concepts during storyboard sessions or films, so on and so forth. I don't have to read them all, but um, this is this is how you describe the things that that you've done. If you have creative thinker and your writing uh, exercises that you participated in, um, any relationship building um, things that you've done, you want to list those as well, right? Any questions about that? I mean, this this presentation was put together prior to me taking over the position. Uh, about a month ago, month month and a half ago, I was on the employer development side, and my job was to reach out to every employer in in the state of Texas to get them to come to this great institution of UNT, Go Mean Green, Scrappy, with the, with the call. Why should they come and recruit Lauren? To work for them. My job was to sell why Lauren was the best candidate for you guys to come to this campus so you can hire Lauren. That was my job, to be that bridge from the students to the employer. Now I'm on the other side. So now I have the best of both worlds. If there's a job that you guys want, and you're going on Indeed, man, they, they just, I just can't get a call back. You don't have to do that. Just come over to Chestnut, hey, Mr. Dark. Or send me an email, Mr. Dark. These are the five companies that I want to work for. These are the five schools I want to. This is what I want to do. Can you reach out to them on my behalf? Absolutely. Let's take a look at this resume. Let's get the resume right first. Let's get that cover letter where it needs to be. And then guess what? I'm just going to send a nice little email. I'm going to go to my database, send a nice little email. Hey, I want you to take a look at this young lady's resume for me. All right, take a look and see if she'll be able to. Viable candidate for the position that you got posted on our website. Sure, Joseon, let me tell you. Oh, Joseon, can I come on campus at an interview? Let me reach out to him and see. You get that email back, hey, guess what? Great news. You got an interview next week. Come in for a mock interview on Monday. Let's get you prepared for it. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Y'all don't even know I exist. You know, I only came over. You know, he, he thought I was a student when I first came. All right.
leadership involvement, uh, any leadership things, remember, um, ladies, you want to keep everything uniform, make it as smooth as possible, easy to manage, navigate with the eyes from left to right as far as reading is concerned. All right, bullet points, form of statements. Your statement, this is called the SOAR method, okay? Um, your statement, what did you do? That's your action verb. Uh, your occurrence, how often, daily, weekly, monthly, so on and so forth. How much, how much time did you spend? Add numbers. What happened because of it? What's the result? That's the SOAR method. So you organize, excuse me, you organize group meetings. Um, you organize weekly meetings for 35 members which provided everyone with up-to-date information regarding upcoming events and activities. All right? So that's the SOAR method. That's how you put all of these things that they're asking into that, into a statement. All right? Now, bullet points, they emphasize the skills that are relevant. Okay? Uh, you have so many skills, you can't include all of them. You know, you want to keep your resumes to one page in length. All right? One page in length, that's it. And you want to condense what you did. Um, so, if you are a student A, um, you had some, some, you had certain jobs that you were just responsible for on a daily basis. Like you, you were accountable for student, student attendance. All right, that's all you need to bullet point. You don't need to write down, well, I sat down at the desk and, you know, and I took roll and made sure every student was sitting in their seats, you know, didn't have their shoes off. No, I was just joking. All right, so that's the content that's, that you list, okay? Uh, trans, transferable skills uh, to include. Build rapport quickly with over 30 customers that build rapport. That's a transferable skill that, that, guess what? You learned that when you was working in groups. The teacher group you with friends. I mean, people that weren't your friends. So you had to go around the class, hi, my name is, hey, you know, and you kind of build rapport. That's, that, that's how you first start off building rapport. Um, make sure that you include collective accomplishments, uh, produce the highest customer service satisfaction rating here, provides the sales team. Uh, Again, you want, to, you want to list the things that you've done, okay? List those things. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't, don't say to yourself, hey, maybe, maybe this is too much. You will know when it's too much, okay? Um, be specific. Replace vague words such as assistant with responsible for it. And I was responsible for keeping keeping the rope. I was responsible for making sure students were at presentations from personnel when come to presentations, all right? So, use numbers, okay, before and after, all right? I'm sure you guys have read, read down, down to that part. Uh, now, the interview, okay? Oh, this is where the nervousness comes in. So, you've created this wonderful resume. You've listed all of your transferable skills, okay? You've come and had your resume critiqued it. You got it down to the last um, um, character on your resume is ready to rock and roll. We send it off. Okay, we don't know what's going to happen, but we got all the, the the words. We have all the content that made you stand out. Transferable skill, just what that employer is looking for. Now they send us an email. They want an interview. Uh oh. I thought the hard part was was getting the resume ready. Now it's interview time. Oh my God, I know I'm going to blow it. I don't know what to say, what to do. I don't know. Well, we have mock interviews, okay? And uh, your resume alone will not land you the internship. It won't land you the job part-time nor full full-time opportunity. Like I said, nowadays, they're not just going to interview you, not with just one person. Different personalities. The first person that you interview with may be upbeat, personal, personable, you, you, you know, glad to see you. Really can't read him, you know, he's just high energy. Then you come into the classroom, you know how you guys are smiling. Mike hasn't smiled yet, so next I gotta go sit down in front of Mike. He's going down, well, tell me about this. Tell me about this job. Tell me what did you do here? What? And you're not getting any energy from him. Can you can you come back from that? Can you still stay strong and confident? 
But when you come in for an interview, clock interview with Mr. Tharp, I'll put you through those scenarios. I want you to sweat. I want to see your armpits get wet up under your shirts. I want to see that because if we address those things at the interview, at the mock interview now, guess what? When you get in front of the real employer, there's no sweat. I'm prepared for this. I'm prepared for it. So, uh, make sure that, that, that when the time comes, once we get your resumes completed, have your transferable skills on your resume, uh, that, that you schedule a mock interview, okay? And uh, make sure that you put, make sure that um, you put in the email that, that be tough on me, okay? Be tough. Be tough on me, all right? You want the hard questions because let me tell you, when you're prepared for the unknown, nothing, nothing, nothing's more devastating to the, to the human spirit than the fear of the unknown. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm going to get this job or not. The worst thing that can happen is that you, you know what went into a different direction. Okay, no one loves rejection. No, everyone hates that. But to be prepared for it, okay, that's what I do. I've had five students over the past month to come to me for mock interviews that had interviews over at the career center in those interview suites. Four of the five ended up getting a job walking out of there. And they came back and sent emails and credit. Hey, thank you for being tough on me, Mr. Dunn. Look, she's looking at Norm. I almost said my interview with, with, with Wayne. <laughs> but uh, make sure you guys do that. All right? Now, at the interview, and I know I'm just here for transferable skills, but it all flows. I think that this is great information for you guys. Um, tell me about yourself. Uh, what is your greatest strength? What is your weakness? Why should I hire you? Tell me a little bit. Tell, tell, tell me about the time when such and such happened. All right? Where do you see yourself in five years? These are the basic interview questions, and they cover different spectrums. Okay? Behavior skills, critical thinking skills, all of these things is what they cover during the interview. Okay? Transferable skills. Back in high school, you said high school. Those are transferable skills. That's all they are. Things that you encounter on a daily basis. Customer service, being friendly, being helpful. Transferable skills. 